Hi, and welcome to Faith Temple Church Online. This is uh, our second service. We'll be in quarantined up. So I'm uh, glad to have you guys back. Hope everyone is happy and healthy in this time. And to enjoy a little extra time with your family. It's always a good thing, right? And, uh, and I would love to welcome you on this blessed Palm Sunday. Amen. Today's reading will be out of John 12. We're starting with the 12th verse. I'm reading out of the NET version of the Bible. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him. They began to shout, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Uh, I want to take a moment there and just talk about that word, Hosanna. So, by this time, it was known just to be a, a very high praise. But, literally translated, it means, the God, God save us. And then, so, they were actually prophesying what he was about to do on the cross without even knowing it, by shouting out this praise. He had come to save them from the sins of their past, present, and future. And that's awesome. Verse 14, Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Do not be afraid, people of Zion. Look, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. In uh, Matthew 21, it talks about how he got this donkey. He sent two of his disciples ahead to him to a small town by the Mount of, Mount of Olives. And he told them, you'll find a donkey and a colt next to the donkey. And he said, no, and take them for me. And if anyone asks, say the Lord needs them or has use for them. Uh, there was a law in the land at that time that allowed public figures to use animals for this purpose. So he wasn't just saying it to say it. He was actually using the laws in Rome at the time, much like we have today where the government can confiscate a vehicle if they need to and things like that. Not something that's used a lot. I don't know if it was used a lot back then, but it's existed for a long time. <clears throat> Verse 16, his disciples did not understand these things when they first happened, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that these things had to happen to him. See, when it was happening, they didn't realize that he was fulfilling the prophecies of the old, uh, of the prophets of old. Uh, it's written in Zechariah, uh, Isaiah speaks about it. So he was fulfilling these things, and at the time, not everyone knew what was going on. They were just uh, kind of along for the ride. Sometimes, I think, we're so caught up in what our day-to-day -day life is like that we don't see what God is doing and that it's for God's intended purpose that things happen the way they happen. And it's also our job to make sure we're fulfilling the Word of God in our life. You know, as we fulfill the Word of God, we set up for bigger and more important events in the future. Something as small and uh, as important as it seems to ride a donkey with a, uh, its colt can really set up and show this is the fulfillment of the old prophecy. So never neglect to do something small that God has put into your life to make sure you're in a place to succeed and fulfill prophecy in the future. Verse 17. So the crowd who had been with him when he had called Lazarus out from the tomb and raised him from the dead were continuing to testify about it. Because they had heard that Jesus had performed this miraculous sign, the, cr the crowd went out to meet him. See, we go again there, and we can see that something that happened in the past was setting up for future success. This crowd met them, not because he went before it and announced his arrival, but the people that saw him call Lazarus from the grave had already went into this community and testified who Jesus was. So when they heard that Jesus was arriving, they came to meet him. He didn't have to announce his own arrival. The people called him, cried out Hosanna and called him Lord. Uh, verse 19, this is the last verse of the reading. Thus the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you can do nothing. Look, the world has run off after him. 
You know, and this is important to remember because when we lift the name of Jesus up, there's no opposition. There's nothing that's going to come against us to stop spreading the word of God. It will overcome every political thing. It will overcome everything, every obstacle that comes in our way. When we just keep God first and keep Jesus, uh, the gospel of Jesus being spread around the world, he will make a way. And even in places where it's not popular, it still succeeds and it still produces life-giving results. And it still is there for everyone who needs salvation. Amen. Um, I hope you all enjoyed that short reading from John 12. 12 through 19. Uh, the other account comes from Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. If you want to go through and read those on your own time, you can see it's two accounts of the same event from two different people. It's kind of neat to compare and contrast, and I brought out some of that today. Uh, if you'd like to continue to see these and support us, please leave comments, likes, share this video. Uh, if you want to help us to continue to meet our need, as there is no income coming in from services, uh, we have to rely on people to donate through our online giving and through the mail. So if you'd like to donate online, you can go to faithtemplebg.org and hit the donate button and you can donate through PayPal. Or if you'd like to send uh, an offering in, you can send it to 1361 Devonshire. Uh, make your faith, your checks out the Faith Temple Church, and you can get it to us that way also. I think uh, 1361 Devonshire, Bowling Green, Ohio, 43402. Sorry, I'm so used to dealing with local people, I forgot to give you the full address. And uh, today we'll end with prayer, and let's just give God thanks for making it so important to be a part of his family and giving us a way to access him as a children of God. Lord, on this, this holy occasion, we remember the price you paid for our sins. We remember that you offered us salvation freely because you loved us. And we love you because you first loved us. And then you showed us that love and that mercy and you gave us joy and peace. And Lord, I thank you for keeping us in great health and keeping us knowing how to live lives and enjoy this time of confinement, Lord Jesus. I thank you right now for opening up doors of ministry that would not usually be open at this time. And Lord, I thank you for continuing to speak to your people and lead them and guide them through their daily lives.